Hi, my name is Becca Yoxheimer, and tomorrow night I'm going to be doing my very first pageant, the Mrs. Ohio America pageant. And I just wanted to say how thankful I am for Loveland Speakeasy Toastmasters for sponsoring me in this pageant. They have prepared me by doing a mock interview every month for the last three months. I've sat down with different people where they've asked me questions for three minutes. One was, sell me this pen. And if you were a cereal, what cereal would you be and why? Or they say, why are you doing this pageant? These questions were so important because it helped me prepare for my interview today. And when I asked them for constructive feedback, it was great. They said, smile more. They said, tell more stories. Don't just shoot off facts. People remember stories more. So today in my interview, I told stories and I thought the person that has influenced me the most in my life is my father. 44 years ago, he stole a military airplane to fly my family out of war-torn Vietnam to freedom. I was born in America, and I'm grateful for my opportunity to live my American dream as a result. I have taken every opportunity in this great nation to do everything I can to help people. I formed a group called Strong Women Helping Others because we were helped when we first came to this country. My parents didn't have any money. We lived in low-income housing. We went to the church food pantry to get food. And when for Christmas, I didn't have any toys, I went to the church and got an old tattered Candyland toy that was taped on the edges, of which I still have to this day, and my kids and I still play with it, even though it's missing a few pieces. But it reminds me where I came from and how far I've come. And so with my group, what I'm doing is, I'm trying to break that cycle of poverty in others, like I was given that opportunity. And so I empower other women to volunteer to better their communities. Not only that, I invite them to bring their kids along so their kids can have a love of volunteering at a young age, like my children. We go to the homeless shelter and we bake food and we also serve it to the residents. Just to see the joy in my kids' face of what they've made in serving it to others just shows you that kids can do service work too. They just need the opportunity. And just like my group's motto is, is we are not giving people a handout. We are giving them a hand up in life. So when you are born in poverty, I kind of still have the mindset, even though I'm a dentist, that we need to watch our money, which is a great thing. It's be a good steward of your money. And so when my kids want something, I make them earn it by doing chores. I don't just give it to them. So if they want something like a video game, then they vacuum, they do dishes, and I say, you earn. If you don't work, you don't eat. So if you have to do your chores, if you want something, I want them to appreciate everything that they have, just like I do. When things are given, I feel like people don't appreciate it because they didn't earn it. I have never really been interested in pageantry because I didn't know anything about it. But last year, my assistant asked me, she said, you know, I really think you should do a pageant. You're a very beautiful person on the inside. You do a lot of service work. And at first I was like, I am way too old for this. I'm 43 years old. But she said age didn't matter. So I looked into it. I met all the criteria. One, you had to be 18 and up. I'm twice that. Two, you had to be married. I've been married almost 18 years. And three, you didn't have to have talent. I don't really have talent. So I said, you know what? Let's do this. You only live once. Let's do this pageantry. But the more I looked into it, pageantry is not what people think. It is just showing your inner beauty of the strong woman that God has made you to be. This pageant system celebrates the married woman. I've been married almost 18 years, and it shows that a woman can be married and strong and still serve her community. I represent my city of Loveland, and it's great pride that I have to hopefully also represent the state of Ohio and also our nation if I make it that far. My family is so excited for me being in a pageant. Nobody in my family has ever done a pageant. How amazing would it be for a first generation Vietnamese American to get crowned and go on to Miss America? There's nothing that I think would be better just for my dad's story of stealing a plane, coming over to America so that his kids could have a better future, and now seeing his daughter getting crowned, I think that would just be the cherry on top of the whole story. When my father stole the plane, before he stole the plane, he had heard rumors of people stealing planes. And he said, if we are not the first to escape, we will never be number two. And so he devised the plan, and with God's help, he took a leap of faith. He planned 
and he told the family to meet at an abandoned airport. And so they met him at this abandoned airport. He had crew members on board that had no idea what he was doing. He turned off transponders and flew the wrong way because he needed to go to the abandoned airport. When he got there, people rushed the plane. My mom had a two-year-old and a four-month-old. My sister got trampled. My mom lifted her up and her face was full of blood. And she thought that my sister had died and she was leaving the country, everything she had known and loved in this moment of panic. She forgot my brother on the outside of the plane. But one of my aunts did grab him, so that was good. And I often wonder, how did she feed the babies? How did she change their diapers? Did she cry? Did they cry? So many thoughts go through my mind, but my dad is a hero. When he hit international water, they were free. So they went to Singapore where he signaled the airport and said, we are seeking asylum, please let us land. To his surprise, they said runway two. So he landed. And then after that, when they landed, the authorities didn't know what to do with them. So they put them in jail for 10 days at a holding place. They asked my father, where do you want to go? He said, I want to go to America. And they said, we need 20,000 US dollars. Now this was back in 1975. That is a large sum of money. And so 10 days later, he had reached a missionary and the missionary in America wired him the money and my family was flown to California. And so that's where we landed and my family was sponsored by another church in Ohio. So that's why I live in Ohio and I was born here and now I'm doing my first pageant. If I won this pageant, I would just show the world that you could be a married woman who's strong, serve your community, and also give back. I think it's important for other women to see that we are strong women and we can help others. We can empower other women to do good. So oftentimes people ask me, how do you manage being a dentist, a mom of three, and then also be a beauty queen, a pageant a person, and do all these appearances? The good thing is, I live in the best of both worlds. I only work one day a week. A long time ago, before we had kids, my, my husband and I talked about how I would go down to one day a week and I would stay at home. So I get to work one day a week and stay at home with my kids. I volunteer at their schools and it gives me time to volunteer, which is what I love to do best. I love to serve people because serving is one of my love languages. And so it comes easy. I plan charity events. I did a men's fashion show this year, which was basically a men's pageant, where I had evening wear, fitness wear, and fishbowl interview questions. I had five women judges judge these guys. We had so much fun. All of the proceeds went to charity. Hope House Homeless Shelter, which is a shelter for women and children. And so it was so exciting. We're going to do it again next year. And another event I have planned is called Kicking Out Poverty. That will be the summer where it's a kickball tournament and the money that goes in the kickball tournament goes to a homeless shelter. When my family came over, they didn't have any money. So they had to live in low income housing and they had to get food from the church food pantry. And for Christmas, we didn't have Christmas presents. I remember going to the church when I was about four and picking up this present that was this old tattered candy land that the edges were taped up. I still have this game to this day. Some of the pieces are missing. I play with my kids. It reminds me of how far I've come and that now I'm in a position where I live the American dream. I went to school, I became a dentist, and through the help of volunteers and hard work, people can break the cycle of poverty. So through my group, I wanna tell people that you can do this. You need other people's help as not a hand out, but a hand up in life. When you're getting interviewed at a pageant, they can ask you any question they want. Toastmasters impromptu section has really prepared me because that's where somebody comes up with a topic and you right on the spot have one to two minutes to speak about it. So that has really helped train my brain to be able to answer questions quickly and thoughtfully. So Toastmasters has played a great role in how I interviewed today and I'm just very grateful. I want to thank Michael Pope for especially for setting up these mock interviews and also finding videos where I can watch. I believe that there were two other people who um, have a crown that did Toastmasters and he found those videos for me to watch. So I think that if you do a pageant, it is so important that you join a Toastmasters because it helps with your leadership and your communication skills. Thank you.